Evening everybody, uh, Island Biker here. Um, so I have just received this in the post, uh, ordered it about a week ago. Uh, it is a Shad E22 tank bag. Uh, I wasn't really in the market for a new tank bag. Um, this one came up on uh, uh, on eBay and it just seemed like a, uh, a good size for what I wanted to do because I'm desperately trying to get all of my gear into you know, a tank bag, it's a little bit easier, better to access stuff in the office. And I've got a number of clip-on affairs, but nothing really big enough to hold my laptop. Now, it says on the box that this thing can uh, take a helmet uh, when it's fully expanded, so hopefully I'll get my laptop in there. Stay tuned for the next couple of minutes. Uh, while I unbox this, I'm gonna put some stuff in it, stick it on the bike. Uh, I've got the tracer on this side at the minute, so we'll see how that fits and then uh, We'll do a couple of pictures later in the week with it attached to the FJR 1300. Hey guys, right, welcome back. So uh, let's break this one open. I'm always worried about setting into something with a pair of scissors because let's face it, anybody's gonna cut something up that I shouldn't, it's going to be me. So I got this at a bit of a steal, to be honest. I'll talk about prices in a bit, but it was sold as new. Uh, maybe it's old stock for a shop or something. I'm not sure, that's where it goes. Still sealed though. Shad, semi-rigid, E22 tank bag out of the bag it comes. 16 litre to 21 litres, water resistant zipper, uh, universal tank bag base, inner pockets, reflective rain cover, outlet for USB charger, compression straps, expandable, and a shoulder strap. So, first impressions, yeah, I quite like the look of that. It's good shape, it is semi-rigid, so it's not absolutely fully solid. It doesn't feel like that's gonna collapse over time. I know I've had some that do. So this is the bit that faces you, the rider. So the biggest issue I have with these shoulder straps is they're often quite cheap and nasty. Um, I mean, that's okay, that'll do. Plastic clips, for a plastic and metal, because I find that the metal ones kind of slip out. That's what they do on my Yamaha cases. Put a bit of rubber on it. It's handy if you need a barrier pass to get into wherever you work, quite like that. Carrying handle, smooth rear, and there seems to be a grommet in the bottom which leads up to the top. And a little strap at the front, I assume that's to compress it. Zippity zip. Okay, so carrying compartments, we've got two at the front. Velcro, place for pens. People still use pens? I don't know. Probably get a small iPad in there. Now, this was on the image, and I didn't know if it actually came with the kit, because it didn't specify anywhere. Yeah, really, really happy with that, actually. Good, solid, waterproof map case. I mean, they advertise it on the picture with an iPad in it. That's not what I'm going to do. Just handy to have a map that you can then attach to the top of the bike. So it showed it clipped into something. I don't quite know how that works. So we'll figure that out in a moment. Strappington Strapsville. Blimey. All right, so that, that's a lot of strap. So what'll be interesting is whether you can buy just this piece separately so that I can permanently fit it to each bike. Reflective rain cover uh, or massive shower cap. And inside we've got a securing strap. That liner looks, if not removable, but certainly unzippable. I don't know what the point of that is at this stage. We'll find out. Cool. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Quality seems okay. It's a little bit thin. It's going to be a daily bag, and I, as I say, I did get a, a steal. So I uh, was looking at these about 120, 130 pounds, depending on where you looked. I found this on eBay, sold as new, which it does look to it, and I got it a buy it now price of 50 quid. I'm still suspicious, but I'm sure that'll pass. Let's have a look. Let's unzip. Okay, so we need to do that one first. So I don't know if you can see that was a little strap on the front. Probably not meant to undo it all the way, but, uh, you know, that's happened. And then we get another five litres of capacity. So that is a really good size tank bag. The main reason I went for this particular tank bag, the Shad P22, 
There you go. It's nice reflective tape and some logos like that. So the main reason I went for this particular shad tank bag is if you go and look for shad tank bags, there's actually a picture of a blue tracer, exactly like mine, with this on it. And it just looked like a really, really good fit. The Yamaha one's nice, but it doesn't quite sit as nicely as I like. If it fits on the tracer, I know it'll fit on the big FJR. So what we'll do is we'll pack all this stuff up, take it around the front to where the bike is, and we'll go through fitting it on the bike. There's no instructions with this, so it does seem pretty self-explanatory. Or does it? We'll work it out. It'll be a journey of discovery for us all. See you in a minute. Right, welcome back. Here we are at the front of my garden so uh, firstly excuse the crunching um, there's gonna be lots of crunching because I have a gravel driveway which isn't ideal so I'm gonna fit the shed universal uh, tank bag adapter onto the tracer 700 go away mr. ant I don't need you as I say this is a uh, universal so it does take a bit of fettling to get it with the right size full disclosure um, I've already adjusted the main straps to fit around the tank. And it's a very simple thing to do, so we'll, we'll look at that later. And uh, I've come up with a few simple points that I think will help fit it to this particular bike. This is actually gonna live on the FJR, so there might be another video coming just on how that uh, setup has worked, or, or I may just add some photos in a bit later. What we'll then do is we'll look at what we can actually load into the Shad E22 box, um, put all that together, uh, and then a bit later, if the weather holds off, and I am fighting the rain a bit, we've had a bit of drizzle already, we'll, we'll go out for a ride and just, uh, see how it feels and you know if it's not too in the way as i say it's quite a big tank bag but it does seem to fit the lines of the bike quite nicely so let's get right ahead and into this what we have is the shad tank bag um, which is designed for uh, a range of bikes so we've got four frog clips one in each corner which essentially fit onto the bag itself and we've got one long at the front and then two at the rear with these metal d-type rings so this should be pretty simple to get on now i've got the yamaha tank bag adapter ring uh, and I wanted to kind of leave that on to give me some flexibility you know with what, what other bags I'm using uh, it's handy to clip that on and off so I'm going to leave that on there if we can and just see if that does mess with the shape of the tank bag or indeed fitting this uh, as we go first thing I do I'm just going to lay it on and see how it sits as I said I've already adjusted these I've gone to the sort of maximum length to allow that to drop down as far as I can on the back of the tank and again, as I've taken a look at this already, uh, what I have found out is that the best fitting place, if we just pop off the seat, is this brace bar just here. Uh, and we can get the straps going right across that. It's nice and sturdy, nice and solid. It's not going to go anywhere. And it's right in line with the two long straps for the rear. So, perfect for that. First thing we're going to do, I think, is we're going to fit up that front strap. Now, without wanting to be a teacher of egg sucking we need to make sure that this goes around nicely and doesn't capture any of the cables and doesn't foul the steering in any way there's a lot going on down there on the tracer and you probably won't be able to see much of it on the gopro but essentially you've got the actual stem which is a solid chunk of metal and the cables come around it so we should be able to i can feel a clear path all the way through there which will allow me to drop this front piece down and not foul any of those cables I'll just have a little feel. There is a bit of slack in there, so you can move most of it out of the way. Apologies if this, if you won't be able to see this on the GoPro. It's strapped to my head and I'm using both my hands. So I'll probably cut to where I actually got this <laughs> the other side. Oh no, there we go. So, I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm just going to bring that up through various pipes just there. And then connect that up pull it tight now we can pull it tight from both ends but I really want to see the frog clip up here just so I know that it's not caught on anything I'm not going to pull it massively tight yet because we haven't yet done the backup so that looks clear so I think we're good there right feeding that back I'm going to feed it around my tank bag ring adapter I'm just going to pop these underneath this brace bar here Okay, again, I'm not going to do it uber tight just yet. We'll leave that loose. Same on the other side. So what we're going to need to do now is a little bit of measuring. I'm going to place the tank bag on the top so I can see where it's going to sit. So, yeah, about there is going to be fine. Now, I'm stuck about where I can go. It's going to brace up against the tank ring, but that's okay. So we'll give these a tightener. Now, 
the nice thing about this is, is quite a lot of it is elastic. So we'll pull all that tight. Last thing we want it to do is foul cables and handlebars. And just checking that I've caught nothing in there. So that's going to be absolutely fine. I'll loosen off those. Loosen off these. At which point then we can wrap these up because they do come with handy little velcro ties on the end. I'll chuck that down there underneath the lip of the seat. And we'll tuck down that as well. Right. So we'll adjust that again in a minute. I just want to make sure that the seat still goes on and make sure that we're not rubbing metal D-rings on anything. Perfect. Again, I've not yet stowed this part of the, uh, the strap away. Uh, I'm going to wait to do that until the tank bag is in place and on. So, tank bag on. We've got four frog clips in each corner. I'm just going to click those into place. And then we're going to tighten the tank bag up. That is really quite solid. <laughs> I've marked it up already. Brilliant. I'm just going to pop this one away. Let's make sure steering is clear. So it's going to hit just there. The Yamaha tank bag does that as well. As long as it's got some flex, it should be okay. The problem with it is the horn just there. And that will beep when you do a full lock left turn. I think I'm okay with that. The next thing is fueling. So you print off those first two, open it up, I can get to the fuel tank very easily, and then and just pull them tight again. And if we're worried about fouling, I think we've got a little bit of extra slack to pull that tank back back further. And that's still not going to get in the way. I think it still complements the lines of the bike. It's a good looking tank bag. Right, loading. So, can I get everything in here that I take to work? Deodorant, visor cleaning kit, earplugs, ultimate add-ons phone case, mouse, pen, FJR keys, neck warmer, book, laptop, wallet, books, headphones, pass. And I've normally got some stationery and stuff. So, let's see how we get on. So, could not get the folder in, but I didn't expand the tank bag. And I'm certain if I did, I'd be able to get it in. So what I was really surprised about was this piece here. So it was pretty rigid, um, and I thought it was because it had a piece of cardboard in it to make it rigid, and essentially it does, but it's a piece of cardboard that actually comes as quite a well-engineered, you know, quite a soft foam back there, bit of plastic there. So I don't ride with an iPad. I know some people use them for nav and big maps, but my point being is it would fit in there absolutely perfectly and then it braces onto the top alternatively uh, what i more than likely do because i use uh, an ultimate add-ons case for my mappage and sat nav uh, along with my iphone 8 i like to have a, a map overview of my journey now this isn't kind of a the map i'd use this is a 1 to 25k ordnance survey map of the island so, you know, you'd be riding for three minutes and then you've already come off this map. In terms of having a, like a generic overview of your route or perhaps a just a list of where you're going and it fits really nicely. Just these little hooks pop under there. So it's not a massive faff to keep taking it off, but it's enough, I think, you know, if you left it on with a map in it and you popped in to go and pay for your fuel, it'll keep honest people honest. You know, no one's going to be able to rip it off quickly and that's pretty secure I haven't tightened it up fully yet from a rider's perspective I've still got clear view ahead I've got clear view of the instruments and I've got clear view of uh, the map iPad whatever I mean you could put your phone in there and, and use that this seems pretty robust in terms of waterproofness so extremely happy with that uh, right let's see what else we can fit into this bad boy Just a 
finish up then before we go and do a ride test. It's pretty decent to fit. Not particularly difficult. I mean, once you've got that base plate in place, it should be pretty easy to get it off and on. So we're going to do an actual real world test of this over the next week or so, um, but it'll be on the FJR. Now I've just found out that you can buy the base plates separately, uh, anywhere between 15 and 19 pound uh, on eBay and various other stores. So that means we'll uh, be able to do the full swap, but for now I'll be using the shoulder strap, flipping this over my back, just to take me down to the hovercraft. I've got good access for refueling. It'll be interesting to see how this holds its shape over the next uh, couple of months, etc. Especially with winter coming in. And there is the waterproof cover as well, so we'll be putting that through some tests uh, and seeing how we get on. Uh, but in short, a bit of a bargain. I really like how it looks on the bike. Seems pretty ergonomical. They've put some thought into the design. So yeah, the Shabby 22. Next stage is a ride test, so we'll go and see how it feels on the bike. Uh, make sure it doesn't get in the way, um, and then we'll go from there. Thanks very much, take it easy.